Thanks, everyone. So thank you for coming. Uh, it's been an interesting 24 hours, to say the least. Uh, the last thing I expected to spend my Labor Day on was tracking down how shipping works at Google, how we ship stuff, and so on. So I uh, hope you all had a chance to skim through the comic. I uh, just wanted to give you a little bit more color behind how the comic came about, since that's how most people found out about Chrome. So Eric Antonow, who uh, leads marketing for Chrome, is a huge uh, Scott McCloud fan. So for those of you who don't know, Scott McCloud is a legend in the comic world, and he has written some great books in terms of understanding comics, how comics work, and so on. So as we were talking about how best to describe, Chrome is technically very complex. There is a lot of work that's gone inside Chrome, and we were looking for a good way uh, to describe it to everyone else. And Eric suggested working with Scott. And so Scott was embedded with the team. He interviewed a lot of folks uh, and wrote the comic, so which we hope is a unique way of describing what Chrome is all about. So I want to spend about 10 minutes uh, talking about why, why we built Chrome, uh, what our hopes and aspirations are, give you an overview of what we are doing here. I'll also introduce the team. And the goal is to spend about 30 minutes. We will give you a full end-to-end -end demo of the product, covering both the user experience and all the technology that underlies Chrome. And we will uh, wrap up and take uh, Q&A. So, and uh, Larry will be joining us as well uh, for, for Q&A. So with that, let's get started. So as you can see from the slide, on the top left, uh, what you're seeing is the homepage of Amazon.com in 1995. Uh, if you look at it, it was very symbolic of web pages around that time. These were simple HTML text pages. People just went to these pages to view content. They were just reading what's in the page, nothing more. Let's fast forward to today. In 2008, uh, that's Google Maps with Street View. It's very symbolic of the kind of uh, applications you see on the web today, rich, interactive Ajax applications. People are doing a lot more online, and the web has evolved pretty dramatically. Uh, this is obvious to most people, but what's less obvious is that the underlying browser architecture is still very similar to the original Netscape browser. So the guts of how browsers work is still very similar. To be very clear, there have been a lot of tremendous advances in the browser space. A simple addition like XML HTTP led to many of the AJAX applications we see today. But you know, we've, we believe that browsers should evolve a lot more to keep pace with how fast the web is evolving. Uh, you know, I'm sure most of you spend a lot of time online every day. At Google, we kind of take it to an extreme. Personally, I do pretty much everything inside a browser. I run my spreadsheets in a browser. My documents are in a browser. I collaborate in a browser. All my internal HR applications, my interview systems, HR systems, everything works inside a browser. So when you spend that much time in a browser, you start thinking about, what are the kinds of things you could do if you rethought the browser from scratch? And that was the genesis of uh, Google Chrome. Next slide. So our approach to Google Chrome was obviously deeply influenced by Google Search. So let's think about how Google Search works for a minute. Right? It has a very simple user experience. For most users, very sophisticated users like you, you use Google, uh, you find it easy and usable. My mom and dad, who aren't that internet savvy, greatly enjoy the user experience as well. So it's very simple, yet powerful. The thing that makes it powerful is a very sophisticated core. So under the hood, we have our infrastructure, ranking alg algorithms, servers, and so on, which, which make this experience possible. So when we built Chrome, we tried to emulate this. So we wanted to build something with a very simple experience, but something which had a lot of underlying technology, which made the experience very powerful as well. So that's how we set out to build Google Chrome. Next slide. So this is Google Chrome. Uh, it has a very simple streamlined look, which I will talk about in a minute. Uh, the dictionary definition of Chrome, by Chrome, it means the borders of a web browser window and includes the menu bars, toolbars, scroll bars, and so on. It's kind of an ironic name for our product. While we call the product Chrome, the motto in the whole team was, how do we minimize Chrome? We used to call it content, not Chrome. That's what we should focus on. Our view is that you know, the browser is just an application. It's just a tool for people to interact with the sites and applications they care about. So browsers should not be self-important. We wanted to make sure people were forgetting that they were using a browser. So what does that mean? In Chrome, as you can see on top, there's a very streamlined, uh, streamlined uh, Chrome of the browser. 
So we save most of the space for the web page or application you're spending time on. But it goes far beyond this. Uh, ben Gujer and Brian Rakowski, who are the key leaders on the user experience for Chrome, will give a complete demo of what, what, what I mean by the simple user experience. In Chrome, we don't interrupt the user at all. There are no dialogues which pop up in front of you and ask you to do something. So our goal is that the user should enjoy surfing the web and the browser should stay out of the way. And Brian and Ben will talk about it in, uh, in more detail. In addition, as part of this user experience, we have dramatically simplified search and navigation, two of the most common activities you do in browsers today. About 70% of your uh, internet browsing is going back to things you've seen before. So we have spent a lot of time optimizing these two use cases. Next slide. So what's un under the hood? So let's talk about what makes this browser powerful and fast and stable. There are three main components to Chrome. So the first thing is rendering engine. Uh, we use WebKit, which is an open source rendering engine, which is the same rendering engine which powers Safari, Apple's browser as well. One of the most important principles as we started working on this project was while we wanted to give more choice to users, we wanted to make sure we didn't create a headache for developers. In fact, I was reading some of the comments on the web yesterday. There were a few comments which were posted out there. Oh God, one more browser for me to go and optimize my site on. We actually wanted to avoid that. So Chrome uses WebKit, one of the existing rendering engines. So we have not added another rendering engine to the world. So if you're, if you're a webmaster and your site works in Safari, it'll work automatically in Chrome. Why did we choose WebKit? It's, it turns out to be very fast. Darren Fisher, who's our tech lead on the underlying technology in Chrome, will, will give you a complete demo of WebKit a uh, short while. So WebKit turns out to be much faster. It's a very simple code base, and it was very familiar to a lot of Google developers as well. It turns out that our mobile efforts are also, uh, the, the browser in Android uses WebKit as well. So it made a lot of sense for us to use WebKit. The second main component in Chrome, uh, which is a fundamentally different way to think about the browser, is the multi-process technology. So let me describe this uh, for a minute. What do we mean by multi-process? Let's, let's take your desktop as an analogy. In your desktop, you have many, many applications running. Uh, you don't expect when one application crashes on your desktop for it to take your entire desktop down. That's how most browsers work today. All browsers work as one single process. So in Chrome, we have tried to bring these good elements into the browser. We think of the browser as a modern platform for the applications, the web applications that it's running right now. So in Chrome, each tab, which could be an application, runs in its own process, in its own environment. Well, what does that mean? It offers three main benefits. Uh, one is it makes the browser much more responsive and faster. Even if something is happening in one tab, the other tabs stay responsive. So the, from a user experience standpoint, the browser, you can continue doing all the things you're doing in the browser without any slowing down. So that makes the browser faster. It makes it more stable. I talked about crashing. In Chrome, if one tab crashes, you can hit reload and continue working on. Uh, con you can go back to that page. You can as well continue and use the other pages. Your browser doesn't go down just because one application misbehaves. Your browser doesn't slow down just because one application is slow. The third thing is it enhances security. By putting each tab in its own process, uh, you know, we, we can also sandbox. Sandbox is a technical term, but literally we can take this application. You can think of, think of it as putting in a box, shutting all the doors, uh, shutting all the lids, and you know, we strip away privileges. So the application cannot do harm to your computer. It cannot read and write on your computer. So it's a much safer browser as well. So the multi-process architecture is one of the fundamental underlying advantages uh, of Chrome, and we were able to do it because we, could, we were rebuilding a browser from scratch. This is something difficult to do if you were layering this on an existing browser. The third main uh, thing in Chrome is V8. Uh, V8 is a major technological breakthrough in Chrome. Lars Bach, uh, who led a team in Aarhus, is one of the foremost uh, VM experts in the world, and he and his team rewrote a complete new JavaScript engine uh, from scratch for Chrome. So what do we mean by a JavaScript engine? Most web applications are uh, written using a common web programming language called JavaScript. And your browser needs to execute that uh, for it to run this application. So Chrome 
and V8 executes JavaScript much, much faster than current existing technologies. So it'll make your applications run faster. More importantly, most web developers don't use JavaScript a lot because it doesn't run that fast in a browser. So with V8, we hope it'll not only run today's applications faster, but it'll, it will enable a whole new class of applications for tomorrow. Lars will talk about V8 in much more detail. So that's the simple user experience and sophisticated core, which delivers a very stable, fast, and easy experience for our users. So a few things. Uh, we, we care about making our products available to everyone. So Chrome, it's being launched today. It's available for PC, Windows, Vista, and XP. We are working very hard on Mac and Linux versions. Uh, to be very clear, we had one team, and from the start, we designed Chrome to be multi-platform. So Chrome was designed with all three platforms in mind. And you can see it when you use the product, the look and the feel uh, you know, makes it work well in all platforms. We decided to launch the Windows beta version as soon as it was ready, because we wanted to engage with the community outside and get feedback and improve the product. But we are working very, very hard on Mac and Linux versions. A lot of us inside use Mac and Linux. And so, we, you know, so there is enough internal pressure to get this ready on those platforms as soon as possible. Another thing which is very exciting for Chrome is on day one, we are launching it in over uh, 100 countries and in 43 languages, so which is uh, uh, unprecedented for a product of this scope uh, on day one. So we are very excited by that as well. Excellent. So the final point I want to make is Chrome is fully open source. So we are end-to-end, -end, all of Chrome is open source under a very permissive BSD license. Our, our intent here is to help drive the whole web platform forward. As we built Chrome, we benefited a lot from existing open source technologies. I talked about WebKit. We have borrowed components from Firefox as well. So in that spirit, we wanted to make sure everything we do here is available for others to use and improve upon. Uh, to be very clear, when, we, when I say our goal is to help drive the web platform forward, as the web gets better, it has a direct strategic benefit for Google. We live on the web. We build services on the, on the web. If the web gets better, more people use the web, and Google benefits. We can write better apps. We have evolved from a search company to a search ads and apps company. We can write better applications on the web. So we care about this a lot. So with that in mind, Chrome is fully open source. And today we are announcing Chromium, which is our open source project, and which will be, uh, which will be going live. And the entire code is available for people to use and contribute to.